All right, today we're going to be in Chapter 2, Lesson 5. We're going to discuss scatter plots. And then for those of you that want to push a little further, you can go on and, and discuss lines of regression. So our, these are our content standards and our mathematical practices. So if you'll pause for just a moment and read those, then move forward when you're ready. So previously um, we wrote linear equations and now we're going to use scatter plots and prediction equations and we're going to model data using lines of regression. We have some new vocabulary, quite a bit, bivariate data. A bivariate data is data with two variables such as a year and a number of visitors or something like that. It's called bivariate data. Now a set of bivariate data graphed are graphed as ordered pairs in a coordinate plane and it's called a scatter plot or a dot plot. A scatter plot can show whether there is a positive, a negative, or no correlation between two variables. So positive, negative, then there's the line of fit. We'll discuss that today. A prediction equation, a regression line, correlation co coefficient. Let's look at positive and negative correlation. See, it looks like a positive and negative slope, doesn't it? So a positive slope has a positive correlation, a negative slope shows a negative correlation. A strong positive correlation, the slope of the line is positive and the points are close to the line. A weak negative correlation, the slope of the line is negative and the points are not close. See how much further they're scattered away from the line? These are closely grouped around the line. These are scattered. If there's no correlation, it's hard to figure out where to draw that line. There's no obvious pattern of increase or decrease for the given data. So this um, scatter plot is said to have no correlation. So we've got a table and it shows the approximate percent of students who sent applications to two colleges in various years since 1985. We're to make a scatter plot of the data and draw a line of fit. And we're also just to describe the correlation. So I made a note of the points. It might be handy for you to do that as well before you go any further. So we're going to graph the data as ordered pairs. So there's 0, 20, 318, 615, 915, 12, 14, 15, 13. So the uh, number of years since 1985 on the horizontal axis and the percentage on the vertical axis. So again, time is across the x-axis, but these are years since 1985. Now if you were to try to draw a line that's closest to most of the data, see a line going through here? So it looks like the earliest uh, points would be 318 and then the latest would be 1513. So we're drawing a line through those points. Can you see that? They show a strong negative correlation. There's only one point that's really very far from the, the line. So we're going to use two ordered pairs to write a prediction equation. So we're going to use those two points that we showed at the very beginning of the graph and at the end of the graph that uh, fit the line. We have to find the slope between those two points, which we have been doing. So we have a negative 5 twelfths. And notice we had a negative correlation, right? So we're expecting a negative slope. Now using point slope form, you can choose either one of those points and then the slope to find, this is called the prediction equation. So we can substitute values in for x to predict what's going to happen in y. So we're going to predict the percent of students who will send applications to two colleges in 2010. So 2010 happens to be 25 years after 1985. So when we use the prediction equation to find the value of y, we're going to show that x is 25. So using our prediction equation, substitute in a 25 and simplify. So it's approximately 8.83 percent is what our model indicates. Now how accurate is this prediction? Well, except for that one point, 615, the line fits the data very well, so the prediction value should be fairly accurate. Okay, time to check your progress. So we're given a table, and it's time for you to 
to work this to find the best line of fit for the data. Which one of these would you say is the best line of fit? So pause the video for a moment and then turn it back on to check your answer. C. Well, notice this line isn't even near the data, neither is this one. I don't know where this is. This one's closer, but it's not quite with the data. So this is the line of best fit for that set of data. It's just pretty much common sense, doesn't it seem to you? Now, the scatter plot shows the approximate percent of drivers who wear seat belts in various years since 1994. What is a good prediction equation for this data? So we're going to use the points 671 and 1281 to write that equation. So remember, you need to find the slope and then substitute in the point slope form. Come back and check your answer. Good. You get y is equal to 5 thirds x plus 61. Well, the first time I made a boo-boo and I ended up with 3 fifths x and nothing was working out. So I went back and checked my math. Sure enough, I'd entered in a couple of things wrong. So 5 thirds x plus 61. I got a slope of 5 thirds and when I went y minus 71 is equal to 5 thirds times x minus 6, it worked out just fine. Now they want us to use this equation to predict the percent of drivers who will be wearing seat bolts in 2010. Now the thing is, 2010 is how many years since 1994? Yeah, I got 16. So that's where we're going to substitute 16 in for x. When I substituted in, I ended up getting y is equal to 87.66 and the number that's closest to what I got when I worked the problem is 87 percent. So good job. How accurate is the prediction about the percent of drivers who will wear, well, will wear seat belts in 2010? So pause for a moment, read through the problems, and see which one you would select. I agree, except for the one outlier, that line fits the data very well. I agree. Okay, so the next part that we're going to be discussing, regression lines. Um, it would be best if you would go into your textbook and look at the example on page 94 and 95. That way you could practice it step by step with your calculator. I am going to go and slowly forward through this um, PowerPoint in case you want to go back and practice again with a different problem. Um, so it's up to you if you want to go any further, if you want to go ahead and uh, stop and start with the exercises. Oh, come here. So these are things you're going to do on the calculator. Then you graph the regression line. So you're going to go to your Y editor, for those of you that have already been graphing. And then you're going to make a prediction using the function that you came up with. So you're going to find Y if X is 2015. So according to the function, the median income in 2015 will be about 69,220. And check your progress. Here's another opportunity to uh, use your calculator and the answer is B. Good job folks. You are ready to begin the exercises.